Let's see some film of wings in action. <coughs> this is a hawk. And watch the way it controls the shape of the wing in gliding. Now watch it flapping. Not entirely surprisingly, creationists are also very fond of wings. And they uh, once again make a similar point about what's the good of half a wing, what's the good of three quarters of a wing. How could something like those wings have evolved from the silly little wing stubs that must have been there at the beginning of the evolution of wings? Well, let's tackle this with another little Bryson special. These are not exactly flying creatures. They live up trees and they have wings to show they're creatures. They also have little eyes to show that they're creatures. Uh, they live up trees and if they were to fall from the trees, they would uh, have been at, in, at risk of breaking their necks. Thank you. Both of them, in this case, uh, from this low height, one with a little skirt and without a little skirt, uh, survive the, the, the breakage. At this depth, you don't need a little wing. This is a wing stub, call it a flange or a wing stub. It's not become a wing, but we're looking at the ancestral uh, stub that might eventually have evolved into a wing. When the height is sufficiently low, then nobody's going to break their neck. But if we raise the thing a bit, very carefully, Sometimes these animals are going to find themselves leaping from higher branches. And at, from higher branches, it may be that these little, even pathetic little wing stubs like this might make a difference. Let's see what happens now. Right. Now, in this case, from that higher level... From that higher level, even a little wing stub like this can make a difference. And once you've got the evolution of a wing stub this long, then natural selection may favour the, the wing stub getting a bit longer still, because there's going to be an even higher height that you could fall from, where the difference between a wing stub that high and between a wing stub that high might make a difference. And the point is that we have a smooth gradient all the way up higher and higher heights that you could fall from, to drive the lineage, to drive the species towards ever longer wings. Controlled gliding has in fact evolved many times over. There are many creatures that have the equivalent of half a wing. This is a snake, a tree snake, crawling along a tree. So far it looks like an ordinary snake. But now it launches itself off, a slow motion picture, the body flattens out sideways and catches the air. It's steering itself down and it's going to land on another tree without hurting itself. This you can think of as the first step towards evolving wings. Snakes never have evolved wings, but that's one possible pathway towards evolving wings. Now here's a squirrel, a tree squirrel, so-called flying squirrel, it has flaps of skin between its arms and its legs, and it glides with them. This is a very beautifully controlled glide. It's downhill all the way. It doesn't go, doesn't flap, it doesn't climb. But it lands gracefully on a neighboring tree. And is completely unhurt when it does so. This is an animal, again, with something like 50% of a wing. And the third example is a lizard. In this case, it has skin stretched between its ribs. All these are different ways in which wings might have evolved. In no case did they properly evolve, but they show what the beginnings of wings might have looked like. So not only can you do well if you have half a wing or a quarter of a wing, but lots of animals actually do. This is a flying lemur. Looks like the flying squirrel we just saw, but it's totally unrelated. It comes from Southeast Asia, has nothing to do with it. And I think you can easily imagine how that could eventually give rise to something like that, a flying fox, which is a bat. That has proper wings, that's as good as a hawk. Uh, that can fly and flap properly.